<clears throat> um, namaste to all of you who will be tuning into this portion of Into the Stillness. Another Absention presented by myself, Master Omaka. And today we will be given a beautiful example in the subject matter of the diligence of discipline. Today I want you to find yourself getting very still so that you could take in every ounce of what I will be sharing with you so that you can hear clearly with your heart, mind, and soul. And so let's begin with first giving you an in-depth understanding of what does it mean to have the diligence of discipline in order for you to understand the diligence of discipline i have to lay out for you a visual image in a sense of what it looks like and so let's start by going into this stillness and so the way that we can enter into the stillness is going to come by discipline first. But to enter into the stillness, we must know how the stillness is available for us to enter into. And you may say, well, how do I know when I'm being still or what is stillness or when am I being still and when can I decide and choose how and when and where to enter into the stillness. So let me give you an example. Let's say you decide the very moment that you want ice cream. And from the moment of deciding that you want ice cream, you have now opened up a, a gateway or an entryway or a, a portal in a sense. You, you've opened up a, a, a gateway. And so the moment from deciding that you want ice cream up until the moment you get ice cream, now, whether it be um, you go to your fridge to get the ice cream or you have to get in your car and drive to the grocery store to go get ice cream. From the moment of deciding that you want ice cream until the moment ice cream is in your hands, everything in that space, that is the stillness. Stillness, in short, is moment to moment. And so, from the moment you decide that you want ice cream until the moment you get ice cream in your hands, everything in between that is a stillness. And if you decide to do anything else while in that opening of the stillness, it's just a distraction. And so if we desire to see the internal world become externalized, if we desire to see what is within us become material, then we have to know how to be disciplined. The diligence of discipline comes by way of recognizing and acknowledging to oneself that when you decide you want ice cream 
that that is all you are going to do. From the moment of the decision you decide to get ice cream up to the moment you get it in your hands, that space is the stillness. Now, from the moment you begin to eat that ice cream up until the moment you decide that you are finished with that ice cream, that right there is another moment because the stillness is moment to moment. And so when you decide you want ice cream to the decision of getting ice cream, you open up an entry or a gateway. And once you get ice cream, you close the gateway. Now, from the moment you eat ice cream until the moment you decide you are finished eating ice cream, you've opened up a gateway and when you're finished, you also close the gateway. And so everything in between the moment of eating ice cream to the moment you decide you are finished eating ice cream, that also is the stillness. And if things are going to become material for us, then we have to learn the diligence of discipline. And so when you are, when you engage into that entryway, once you engage that entry, you cannot do anything else lest it be a distraction. Anything that you do in that space just becomes a distraction and you are no longer in stillness. You are in a monkey mind. And it's what the um, Taoist calls it, the monkey mind. And so we have to learn now, how do we enter into the stillness through our disciplines. Well, again, once you decide you want ice cream to the moment you get it, that is the stillness. So think about something here. I want you to kind of think about this. If you want to see that moment manifest itself, then you, beloved, have to become sort of like an oyster and think about what an oyster does an oyster gives us our precious pearls we get our beautiful pearls from the oyster right and so how does the pearl become a pearl well first you must know that uh, pearls are just sand that get trapped inside the mouth of the oyster um, from the ocean floor and it takes that sand and what it does is it secretes its saliva from the glands of the oyster onto that sand practically buffing and polishing that sand until it becomes rounded and it becomes a pearl now, let's imagine I give you a rugged, jagged, sharp piece of glass and I stuck it in your mouth and it was odd shaped. And I told you, I need you to give me this back in a rounded, well-polished form, sort of like a pearl. Well, beloved, it's going to hurt because the glass is going to cut your tongue and the roof of your mouth. You're gonna bleed and you're gonna be left with some scars. And also you're gonna be left with some traumatic injuries and memories. And in order to give me that sharp, rugged, odd, odd shaped piece of glass back in a rounded form, sort of like a pearl. Well, that's what the oyster does with the grain of sand that gets trapped in its mouth. It continues to use its tongue, the oyster itself, and it secretes saliva over that sand until a pearl is developed. Now, why is that something you need to know? Well, because when you're in the stillness or to practice the diligence of discipline and you want to see something from the internal 
manifests itself into the external. You, like that oyster, have to take that moment and focus all of your energy on cultivating that. In another word, polishing that and, and, and buffing that until it manifests itself. And how do we manifest the internal world into the external? Well, we must use disciplines such as meditations. These are methods that are going to bring the internal into the external. When you use methods such as meditation, imagination, visualization, affirmation, and even mantras, these are the things that are going to allow you to feel what's internal and truly feel it in the external. And, and you can feel it while it's still internal. Let's say you want to own a brand new Mercedes Benz. Well, in order to see a Mercedes Benz manifest itself into the external, you have to meditate. This is the form of what an oyster does with a pearl. It, 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 it secretes its saliva onto the sand and it continues to polish and buff away at that grain of sand until it becomes a pearl. And so we do that through meditation, meditation, visualization, imagination, affirmation, and even mantras are, are ways that we are doing exactly what the oyster is doing. And we're using energy to buff around that image, buff around the visualization, buff around our affirmation, buff around our mantra and our journaling. So when we write these things out, we are getting the internal out into the external and we can begin to feel ourselves driving that Mercedes Benz even before we ever have it because then that's when it becomes a desire okay and so now you have this insatiable desire this appetite for a Mercedes Benz that cannot go away until you materialize it through visualization imagination meditation affirmation so a lot of times people don't know how to manifest things. And the reason why is because they don't have the diligence of their disciplines. These disciplines are meditation, affirmation, mantras. And so you want to manifest a Mercedes Benz. Well, in your meditation, using your 108 mala beads where you would do a mantra and you would say for 108 times chanting. I own a Mercedes Benz or I am the owner of a brand new Mercedes Benz. I am the owner of a brand new Mercedes Benz. I am the owner of a brand new Mercedes Benz. Now, as you continue to chant that through your, your, your meditation, you're going to literally rewire and program your, your mind, your, your subconscious into feeling yourself driving that Mercedes Benz. I'll give you a short story. I know that for myself, I want to own a Toyota FJ Cruiser. This is a truck in a sense or, or Jeep in a sense. And I've always wanted to own one of these. And I know that I'm getting close to it because my last two vehicles, the, the car I had before, the car I have now, were both Toyotas. Now, that tells me I am getting closer and closer to the manifestation of that Toyota FJ Cruiser. This is not by accident. This is through the diligence of my discipline because when I decided that I want a FJ Cruiser vehicle, I, I 
constantly think about it. I see it everywhere I go. I am still inside a stillness with that vehicle. Once I open the gateway of wanting that vehicle, I still find myself in the moment with that vehicle. I am in the stillness with it. And so I am continuously translating the internal world into the external world. What we must do to stay diligent to our disciplines, if we want to manifest our desires that don't go away, these desires are insatiable. They cannot be satisfied by anything else. We must know how to enter into the stillness. And we must go into our practices with that. We must discipline ourselves so that these things manifest. Otherwise, you're not going to see what you desire come into fruition because you get easily distracted. And when you're distracted, it's very hard to see that internal world become a reality for yourself. And so once you come from opening the gateway up until the moment you get said thing and close that gateway, you're going to always be in want and in desire of that said thing. And the only way to do away with that insatiable desire is to truly excavate it out of your system through a meditation practice, through a discipline practice like chanting and journaling, rewiring and rewriting the script on what you desire. You have to rewire, but more importantly, you have to rewrite a script which will then remove that thing and begin opening up a new gateway for you to enter into the stillness with that new thing. Otherwise, you're going to always bounce around, jump back and forth in and out of the stillness, wanting this and leaving it to the side until you see uh, something else happen for you. And the most of the time what we do is we jump on these trends that are very um, popular at the time. And I'm not talking social media trends. I'm talking just jumping from one idea to the next because it seems very popular. And it seems like a quick fix. It seems like something that can satisfy the desire that you set aside. And the thing is you're going to replace mostly, uh, you're going to replace a lot of times the desire that you started out with, with desires that will never fulfill that. Because the desires that you see, the trends that you jump on, you see yourself getting those things fairly quickly. You're like, yo, I can get this kind of quick and I am going to get it quick. I'm going to get this really quickly. And what you're doing is you're setting yourself up. You're setting yourself up for a long road, a painful existence. Beloved, I'm telling you to enter into the stillness. You have to do away with this, this idea that something can satisfy something that you truly long to have. Nothing else is going to suffice. So use your disciplines, practice. The diligence of discipline is consistent practice. Consistent practice, seeing yourself, sitting with it every day, writing it out every day, visualizing it every day, imagining it every day. That's what's going to manifest. That is the stillness. Anything else will not satisfy. So if you want to make a thing happen for yourself, like that ice cream, go and get it 
and stay in the moment with it. Will you find yourself doing everything else? Sure you will. But stay there. Stay there with that thing. And don't go anywhere else. That is the only way that you enter into the stillness. Other than that, you are making adjustments that move you out of the painful process that you went through for no reason. Don't go through the painful process for no reason. If you're going to get that pearl, it's going to be painful. And you got to stay there. And disciplining oneself, discipline is painful. But it's worth doing if what you desire is worth having. So go and get that. Be well, beloved.